Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now if you're new to the channel, my name is Nico and I'm a British Greek expat living in Chengdu, China. I make videos about China, traveling here, the food, the culture, the good things and the things that can improve. Today's topic is about freedom in China. As it's a very complex and wide topic and there's many, many things to cover with this and surely we can't cover it in one video, I'm gonna start with a comparison between life in China and the freedoms we have here, comparing it to the West. Because at the moment, let's be honest, there's a lot of beef going on between China and the West. Let's get into it. A balanced view about China is not popular on both sides. The Chinese don't want to hear it because there's still many things that can improve in China and the Westerners only want to hear the negatives so they can keep feeding that negative story that they've been taught from all the brainwashing from the Western social media. Now every country is like a coin. It has two sides, a good side and a bad side or as I like to say a good side and a side that they can improve on. Now I'm not here to tell you how fantastic life in China is or how fantastic China is or how fantastic the West is, I'm here to tell you that there's always pros and cons. The narrative of China in the West is absolutely ridiculous. They'll find just about anything to throw shade on China. And on the other hand, China has things that can improve here and by doing so, that will help them improve their image abroad. Now, there's been a big fuss about freedom of speech in China. And before we go there, first we need to understand that freedom is seen and understood differently in every part of the world. And culture actually has a big role to play in this. For example, for the Chinese, freedom is knowing that they can go outside at any time of the day and not fear that they're going to get shot because guns are prohibited in China. Whereas in the US, people feel that it's their right and freedom to have guns. In Asia, you can't go against your boss or superior leader because there is a cultural respect for the higher rank, a hierarchy. And this is not easily understood by Westerners who haven't lived here or in places like, you know, Japan, South Korea, to name a few. Now, the type of freedom you have depends on the country you live in and what the local culture is like there. This is why you see many foreigners who travel to China or live in China you know, they're shocked at first because they see such a progressive country and they see that they have many, many freedoms under a government like the CCP. And every time someone from the West says something bad about China, they come to its defense. So, but the same can be seen from the other side because many people from China have never traveled abroad and have never experienced the other side, the Western side, and maybe have a misconception about that side also. In the US or UK, for example, if the people are not happy with a leader, they have the right to vote for a new one. Whereas in China, you don't have the option to vote for a new one, but the government can change its policies very fast to improve if they see that something needs changing. From kindergarten up until university, the Chinese people are taught that the government is great for uplifting all these people from poverty, for creating massive infrastructure, and for becoming one of the world's largest economies. And because of all these reasons combined, they're taught that they shouldn't judge the government or the decisions they make. Now, nobody's perfect, and I don't agree with everything they do, but no one can argue that the last 30 years, the CCP has made massive progress in China and created a massive infrastructure, building mega cities, new airports, bridges, becoming the world's largest economy uh, on par with the US. In the West, you're told from a very young age that your voice matters and that you should chase after everything that you believe in. And if you don't agree with something, that you should stand up and say it. For example, if you're part of the LGBTQ group in the West, you should stand up and be proud of who you are. And there's actually laws to protect you out there as well. Whereas in China, this thought is still a developing one. And possibly because of the cultural differences as well. However, Jin Xin, which is one of the most famous outspoken transgender public figures in China, has been seen in loads of TV shows, even had her own show, her own dance academy, and has been widely accepted by everyone in China for being who she is. So we see some acceptance from, from the public, but on the other hand, um, you know, platforms, social media platforms like Weibo, which is like the, the Chinese equivalent to Twitter has, you know, 
ban things uh, to do with homosexuality, for example, or LGBT groups. But then we have to be fair and then see that on platforms like Douyin, which is the Chinese TikTok, they have a lot of information and loads of videos uh, about LGBT. So it's still a processing thought in China and it will take time. And again, it is also due to the culture here. Xinjiang. Now, I know the West wants to keep talking about Xinjiang, but what the West thinks about Xinjiang and what China says is going on in Xinjiang are two different things. Now, in order to stay completely objective, let's look at another example, and this time starting from the Chinese point of view, when the US and other Western countries started wars in countries like Iraq and Afghanistan, to name a few, the, the reasons for starting those wars and the understandings behind it is different you know in in china and in the in the west so there's different understandings of why those wars happened ah, these are sensitive topics man now in the west they say that china has a very high surveillance uh, system and um i would agree but also having lived in in the west most of my life um, and traveled to so many places and also traveled to america i would i would actually say that both the West and China have heavy uh, surveillance systems, which means that the big brother follows us everywhere we go. It's not just, you know, in China or only in the West. It's a global phenomenon now. Ask a Chinese living in China to talk about politics and they'll talk and laugh all day about topics like Donald Trump. But then you ask them about their own government and they don't want to speak about it. And the Western perception is that, oh, they feel scared or oppressed. But the Chinese perception is that the last 15 to 30 years, China has progressed so much, becoming possibly the number one economy in the world right now. So what's there to complain about? So there's a different in mentality there. People in the West think that China is a third world country. And if you look at the developments and in infrastructure and the economy in China, it's completely wrong to say that. But also, on the other hand, many people in China have never traveled abroad. So they've never witnessed the, you know, the Western culture and society. So they've also got a wrong perception of the West. It works both ways. At the end of the day, we all want the same things. Better future, better living standards, you know, peace, health, progress, financial stability for our people. And, you know, the Chinese have a proverb that says, Tiao Tiao Da Lu Tong Lo Ma which means all roads lead to Rome. There's many ways of reaching that goal. And I believe in, you know, building bridges, not burning bridges. And I believe in good vibes, man. So like, as I've lived in, you know, the West, in England, nearly all my life. And now I live in China and I've traveled in so many countries and, and the US as well. Like, and the US and China being the, the two largest economies in the world, I just hope for prosperity dialogue, understanding, understanding of each other's cultures and backgrounds and hopefully we can move forward and have good vibes and all this anti-China and anti-West and all of this bullshit can be done and in the past. So peace and love. I know I must have disappointed some of you with my views and other people might be happy, but um, you know, we should all be open to dialogue and understanding of each other's backgrounds and cultures. And hopefully this can bridge the gap and we can move forward. As always, thank you for supporting the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll definitely see you on the next one. Take care guys. Peace. If you've made it this far into the video, now you're probably wondering what's my personal experience about freedom in China. And yes, I can agree with many of the Western YouTubers who are vlogging about China all the time and saying how great it is and that the place is a very safe place. And I've experienced this as well and that it's a very futuristic place and it has many conveniences. But at the same time, I want you to understand my point of view is that there's a difference between financial freedom and convenience and having you know a safe life that can be one side and then then can be another side another section which is like political freedom what do i mean by financial freedom and convenience it's cheap for us here to live here uh, services like uh, Didi, the taxi service or going out eating food even cutting your hair you know i like to do barber reviews it could be really really cheap and convenient in china and on the other side the political freedom 
you're not really uh, free to criticize um, you know the government or to voice your opinion about sensitive topics online especially on social media platforms or even outside into the public I'm not rich but I live a comfortable life here in China I feel safe to go out any given time of the day guns are prohibited here China the government uh, punishes drug offenders heavily the crime rate is low and all of this combined together creates a very unique and comfortable environment not just for foreigners like me but for the Chinese people as well of course there's things that can improve but every place you know China and the West has pros and cons maybe some people wanted me to go more in depth and detail but at the same time for the reasons I told you before and because I want to protect my uh, family's uh, safety and obviously my safety as well here I can't go into too much detail about certain of the topics but at the same time I want to stay true to myself so I'm not gonna kind of turn a blind eye stay blessed happy new year and I'll definitely catch you on the next one guys take care peace